All right, we're recording. Uh, can everyone, if you can see and hear the brother very well, just also give thumbs up. Like I said, we're gonna have interaction, discussion. Raise your hand if you have a question or something is not making sense to you. Thank you again. Right, Go ahead, so brother Anthony, the floor is Next you. slide. Okay, just you can pass it over to me, Ayala. Right. And just for for everybody to know, we're used to doing these things in, in person, so it's it's a it's a it's a learning curve doing this doing this together. So so one of the one, one of the most important things that we need to know as a people, we need to know uh, we need to know our rights, right? So the U.S. Constitution gives us certain protections for you, and the more you know, the better off you are. This is one of the ways that they, they screw black and brown people in the, in the criminal justice system is that people really don't know the procedures. They don't know what they have available to them. So one of the things that we're gonna go over today is if you do find yourself caught up in the system, what do you need to know to make sure that you're not gonna get broke off with a lengthy prison sentence when you don't need to get up broke off with a lengthy prison sentence? We're gonna go over uh, plea bargains, how they work and how they can mess up your life when you think that you're getting a good deal. So this is another thing that just learning from experience, uh, people need to know what it is that you're facing and, and, and how to get out of certain things that they can hurt you in the long run. How to escape servitude. So abandoning the behaviors that subjugate our lives to slave-like conditions both inside and outside of prisons. You know, a lot of, a lot of the things that we're seeing in the world today uh, with, the, with the police force and everything else with people who are abusing their powers, these things are systemic. So how do we do things on our end? How do we empower ourselves and our people so that we can uh, just stop complaining about stuff and actually start being proactive? I was just talking uh, the other day about how, you know, a lot of people, they see, they see what happened uh, with the police uh, murdering that man, strangling him to death. And they say, you know, it's just to the point where we have to do something. We have to, we have to riot. Right? So it's really about educating ourselves to know rioting ain't nothing new. Over a hundred cities rioted after Martin Luther King was killed. And all it did was burn down the cities and, and hurt black folks economically moving forward because we burned our own areas. Right? So we look at in 1992, uh, April 29th, 1992, after the police got found not guilty for, for, uh, beating Rodney King and it was caught on video. There was riots, burning everything down. It didn't get us anything. But one of the things that happened with those riots, black folks came together, right? So you had the Crips and the Bloods came together and had a peace treaty that was highly successful until in large part, from what I, what I was hearing from a lot of people who were down there, in large part, you had police dressing up like Crips and you had police dressing up like Bloods. And they were going and doing shootings on uh, the so-called rival neighborhoods so they could reignite that, that violence and that hatred amongst, amongst black folks. And a lot of the stuff came out later on, right? Just like you saw today, it came out that some of the people who were breaking windows and, and starting the fires over in those riots where a lot of people were peacefully protesting, a lot of the people who initiated that stuff were actually police, police who were dressed up like civilians. So this isn't the bash the entire system, but it's to educate us on what it is that we need to do, what it is that we need to know, and who it is that we're dealing with so we don't get bamboozled and caught up in it hurting hurt ourselves in the long run. So uh, unity, uh, knowing who to be united with and who to have loyalty to. Uh, this is something we're gonna speak about at length. These are the seven points we're gonna talk about today. Building the empire, investing in ourselves and our futures. If we take the right approach, we could actually benefit ourselves long term. I'm a, I'm a history buff, and I, I've seen how people came up with these grand ideas at certain points in time, and it might have sounded crazy, right? It might have sounded crazy, right? But the thing is, if we actually come up with a realistic game plan, then we can come together. We can come together and uh, build something for the future, but we need to have benchmarks all the way along the way, and we need to have a realistic plan long term. Everybody tries to reach the youth, and by the youth, they usually mean teenagers. And your teenage years are a small little window because today's teenagers is going to be tomorrow's 20-year-olds, right? 
and then you're gonna have the next set of teenagers. We need to have a long-term plan that involves not only teenagers and the youth, but it involves everybody getting off their butt and doing it is what we, what we need to do as a collective and working towards a common vision. Real wealth, developing financial literacy and how to utilize money. One of the problems we see in, in, uh, in our communities is we let people tell us what our culture is to where we chase flashy stuff and we waste our money on a lot of stuff where if we really knew how to spend money properly, that money can make money for us. So you can avoid, you can afford those things later on and have a lot more and not have to do illegal activities in order to do it. And then the, the last one that we're gonna touch on is, uh, uh, I call it a peace treaty, right? But the reality is, it's not just a peace treaty. A peace treaty is something that I like to use common language where people understand what I'm saying, but it's more of a, a unification treaty. Because if you say peace, that's just saying that you're not gonna shoot each other for now. You're not gonna, you're not gonna beef for now. You know, we need to have a unification treaty. We need to have dialogues and actually start coming together because when we come together, we have way more power and we can, we can have a lot more accomplished. When we're uh, uh, protesting and rioting because police kill us, but then we turn around and kill ourselves, it doesn't make no sense. We can come together and have a lot more power and get a lot more done. We're gonna cover that in today's presentation. So next, next slide. Hey, y'all there? <clears throat> Know your rights, name a few, and let's discuss. So before we go to the next slide, I wanna hear some of the youngsters actually uh, speak up. I wanna hear where, what's, what's people's current knowledge about what rights do you have? If you get arrested, I, I what rights up. do you have? I talk, brother? Yeah. Yeah, man, this is, it's, a, it's like, uh, my name is uh, Abdullahi. Uh, man, it's heinous what they did to that black man, you know? Most definitely. It's very heinous what they did to that black man, you know, like, we, we should know it, it's really, I mean, how they treat him, it was very horrible. Like, they pinned yeah. him down to the knee, and like, and, and this is basically, they're hiding behind badges. Yeah. They're hiding behind, I saw the whole thing, and it really made me cry. Like, because they can it's see like, it's, 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 it's a black on black, it's, it's a white on black crime. Like, it's, it's just horrible. Yeah. How, this is like 1950. This is 2020. This is not 1950. Yeah. And you see how they, they, they burned down the, the, the precincts, and they, they burned down all these. This is yeah. Latin, 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 Latin. This is this is like we have to go to that extent for them to cure our pain. Yeah, you know it's just, it's crazy. That's all I wanted to say. It's just it's like and this is and, and bro, uh, Abdullahi, this is this is one of my points, right? Yeah. Uh, you know I'm not gonna be on here talking about condoning criminal activity or burning anything down, yeah. but I will say this: I'm not gonna argue about the precinct. All right. But I will say when we burn down businesses in our own neighborhood, that really hurts us long term. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you take out your pain, take it out in the proper in the proper context. Yeah. Take it out. You know, if if somebody socks you in the face when you're walking down the street, don't go and sock some random person in the, in the face. Go sock the fool who socks you in the face. You know what I'm saying? If you're yeah. gonna do that, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. when, we're, when we're burning down our own neighborhoods, yeah. just historically, historically, yeah. after it happened when Martin Luther King got killed, after it happened when the police got found not guilty with uh, Rodney King, it felt good in the moment, yeah. and I was even rooting it on in the moment. But mm -hmm. what we realized later on is all we did was hurt ourselves because it, 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 it brought black folks to a whole nother level of poverty. You know what I'm saying? So it was a temporary, it was a temporary release, yeah, but, same but time, we need to come up with a better strategy. Yeah, but it's like, it's horrible, man. Like the way they, the way they, the way they, I mean, they kept him down for 15 minutes. It's oh crazy. yeah. Hey, ain't breathe. no question. Hey, you know yeah. what else? I can't that police, breathe. that police who had his knee on his neck had already shot three other people on three separate occasions and then kill three more people in a car in a car aggressively driving in a car you know what i'm saying so but that's that's what i'm saying when we have knowledge of the system that's why you you'll notice there's like this difference in social media where some brothers are speaking out against it and then some brothers are like nah man you got to feel the pain right yeah the brothers who are speaking out against it you'll yeah. notice are the brothers who actually have gained knowledge of the system how the system operates yeah. because once you gain that knowledge then you realize oh wait hold on if we do this in another way we could actually be, become way more powerful than if we just react. If we, if we act instead of exactly. react, then we're not letting True. somebody dictate our actions, right? True. So you'll see the ones who are speaking out saying, hey, look, man, we can do this in a more intelligent manner. It's the people who have learned the system and how to navigate it to benefit our people. And it's yeah. really, you know, everybody's for the people. The people who are saying we need to ride, the people who are saying we don't need to ride. But, but America, it's just on their focus. Yeah. But America is a very, like, it's the system is really corrupt, if you think about Ain't it. Ain't no question. 
Ain't no question. That's why. That's why we're gonna. That's why we're gonna do that. Bro, Yeah. Uh, and uh, Abdullahi, Afwan, uh, I, po- uh, I apologize, my brother. Are you done? Or oh, uh, you can go ahead. Oh, no, no, I'm done. Go ahead, go ahead, brother. Go ahead. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, so, uh, Abdullahi, uh, mashallah, may Allah reward you, man. You, you're doing great work out here. Um, and also, uh, for the community, uh, both you at Yala and everyone else is part of this today. Um, this is really a great conversation. Because as yeah. you mentioned, the people who really know the system and do the actual work yeah. are against the looting. Because there's no way we can say it's okay. And, and I understand. I actually do not look down on folks going crazy in Minneapolis. Yeah. But I'm against the action of looting and stealing. And the interesting part is if you see today the videos that came out, you had the Somali Museum in Minneapolis that got looted. And there's a picture of actually a Somali woman and some Somali folks actually breaking the windows and grabbing the stuff from the museum. Yeah. Uh, you have uh, black businesses, other other black businesses that are being, you know, uh, destroyed. That's it wrong. just reminds us of 1991 with Rodney King uh, during that time with the riots. And there was a, a video that I saw of a, a brother share with me of a, a black man who's walking around that area with a hammer saying, why are you destroying my business? Yeah. I, I decided to have my business in the ghetto so I can give back to y'all. He was mad and all of you, he's talking to the youth. He's saying, why are you guys doing this? Destroying your businesses, right? So we have to understand. And, and also on Facebook, I have to argue with a lot of people talking about, you know, folks are like, it's okay to loot. It's okay to do this. No, destruction of property is not okay. To loot, it's, you know, to go out there and you know, do some looting is not okay. Changing the system through uh, uh, policies is what we need to think of. We, we need to focus also yeah. on a movement because most yeah. people right now, it reminds me of Trayvon's situation. Everybody was all on the hoodie you know, uh, stuff and, you know, the pictures, the memes with the hoodies. But what happened to Trayvon? He doesn't yeah. live in people's minds anymore. What happened to, like, Eric Garner? Yeah. Last time we heard I cannot breathe was Eric. Yeah. In New York, right? And now we're hearing I can't breathe with Floyd. Unfortunately, and I hope this doesn't happen. I hope that you know that I can't breathe from Floyd becomes the last one. It's just that we are always in the moment instead of having a movement. Exactly. Exactly. Have yeah. died in America. So yeah. the last times yeah. we have movements is when real um uh, organizing happened and we can think of the last one I can think of probably is the Black Panther. Uh, sorry. That yeah. was a movement. You know, they were actually pol- uh, policing the police. Right. Mm-hmm. So when I see our people um, arguing about it's okay to, you know, steal and it's okay, okay to destroy. Oh. And for me, I'm like, I don't think these folks are ready for a movement. No, they're, you know? they're, they're just frustrated. Exactly. And, and that's why for me, I'm not even going to like, you know, blame yeah. them or because there's oh, anger man. and we have to understand people are angry. There's trauma the folks yeah. have. So yeah. for me, I'm actually going to use that as an excuse for them because they are my brothers and sisters. And as you can see, we need collective liberation because if you look at the pictures after the protest or even during the protest, it's not yeah. a black and white issue. There's yeah, white whatever. people <clears throat> assisting. So you and, have to understand that as, as people, we have to respect also the white allies that we have. How about that? Yeah. yeah. So the, we, we need and, collective liberation, brother. And uh, we need to respect everybody and whoever who's going to come into the movement. We're one. So it's not a color line because anyone who says that is a liar. Yes. You know? and, and we... And that's it. And we are... And we are... Uh, we are short on time. So, I mean, you have, to, you have some very valid points. And you know we have a tendency of pushing away people who are allies, so we need to we need to embrace that. Uh, Ayana, you want to go to the next slide? All right. So we might to, right to remain silent, right? So this is this is one of the things that I've seen time and time and time again, right? And I want everybody who who is listening to this live, everybody who watches this video later on, don't think you're slick. <laughs> the police are trained in multiple points on how to break you down and and once you get to talking i mean they're 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 so good at breaking you down they had to eliminate some of the some of the some of the techniques because they were getting too many false confessions you're getting too many people admitting the stuff that they didn't even do so you have a right to remain silent and it means just that 
But unless you say, I want to talk to an attorney, then they're going to, they're going to, they're going to be on you. And then you're going to incriminate yourself. All this stuff in the streets, talk, cats talking about uh, uh, snitching and all that kind of stuff. I'm, 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 uh, I'm not, I don't fall into that, that, that delusion because I've seen too many people who are supposed to be solid cats, too many people who are killers in the streets, and then they end up telling them everybody anyway. So, you know, I have no illusion of, you know, just because somebody's doing some, some dirt in the streets that they're going to be keeping their mud, you know? So, but if you do get caught up in the system, the more information they have against you, the harder it's going to be against you. Did somebody call my name? So the more information they have against you, and I'm not saying this to make better criminals. I, I want to I I make that I want to make that clear. What I'm saying is, black folks are disproportionately uh, broke off in this in this state. I public disclose. A lot of people might not know about the Public Disclosure Act, but all public things that happen, you have the right to that information. So I public disclosed all murders from the early '80s all the way till till now. And what I found is, with some some exact identical cases. White people are sentenced to four to 20 years, black, uh, Native American, Asian, uh, uh, Hispanics are sentenced to 75 years to life without for the exact same thing. So four to 20 years, 75 years to life without. So the more they know, uh, the more they're gonna, the more they're gonna use that over you and, 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 and your leverage is gonna be way weaker. So I'd encourage brothers not to get caught up in the streets, not to throw your lives away, but know the fact that you have these rights and you have these rights for a reason. It's if you break the law, you still have these rights. So remain silent, don't tell nobody nothing, and uh, you know, try to get yourself out of the mess you got yourself into, and then you know, turn your life around. Well, Next brother, can I say one thing, Brother Anthony Go Powers? Ahead. Go ahead. One thing I want to say about my personal life is yeah. uh, I just wanna I just wanna put that out there just right now, you know. Uh, yeah. about the system in America. You know, like me when I was uh, about 18, 19 years old. I'm 23 now. When I was 18, 19, I was caught up in the system. Yeah. I actually, you know what I'm saying? I you know everybody messes up in their life. No one's perfect. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I got caught. I got, uh, you know, I, I was in the streets one time. I was, alhamdulillah, God saved me. You know what I'm saying? But I was, yeah. I was doing other stuff. I was young, teenager. You know what I'm saying? I was doing some, and I, I was in, I was in juvie. I went to juvie. You know what I'm saying? I learned how to my mistakes. But it's like it's crazy. Like the, what you're saying is, they they break you down so hard. They try to exactly. scare you. They use tactics. Yeah. yeah. They use tactics to to. They use this. They, they get trained for this. They get they serious training for it. To to to. They, they do it in a legal way. See, they try to use yeah. intimidation. Say whatever. Say whatever. And then you break down. These, and and I and I I was, I, I was a victim to that. I told yeah. everything. And I that's, never that's the thing, right? Exactly. Hey, bro, if you if you give up the information and even if it gets thrown out in court, you still gave them everything and they, you gave them all the people to talk to, all the areas to investigate and they can get the yeah. information other ways. So that's 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 the key thing, man. Keep they your mouth shut. Me. They scared me. And, and, I, yeah. and now I know, you know, what I'm saying it's not good to break the law. But I'm saying like I, I was young and, and I, I broke yeah. down and I, I told them that I, I was literally crying. I, was, I didn't you know, I was scared. Like, you know. It was like it was just a, like a very scary yeah. moment, like, and I just told them everything right there. Yeah, you know. Yeah, so and and like, like I said again, I want to emphasize, I'm not trying to promote uh, criminal behavior whatsoever. No. I'm just no. saying that you know when you when you don't enact your rights, you end up screwing yourself. So uh, yeah. next slide, brother. Thank you, brother. So uh, why should you care? So Washington State is no exception. So you see African-American youths are nine times more likely, uh, Latinos are four times more likely than white kids who get arrested for the exact same thing. So this is, this is an important, this is an important, uh, important moment to, to highlight something because you hear a lot of white people say, oh, well, it's, it's, not, it's not a race thing, it's a class thing. Like, you know, like if, if poor white people then they're going to be treated the same as black folks. And that's not the case, right? But understanding that psychology that they want to, they want to dismiss stuff like that, it's important to uh, be able to reach them on their level, right? Because I knew, I knew some white guys, and they were just like loving Trump, right? And I was like, man, these guys seem, seem kind of normal before this, right? So I was trying to figure out why do these white dudes love Trump so much, right? And then I finally got to it, one of my partners, 
he told me, he said, you know what it is? He said, uh, women have people argue for their rights. Uh, black people have people argue for their rights. Immigrants have people argue for their rights, uh, et cetera, et cetera, right? And he said, there's nobody who argues for white people. So even though Trump talks crazy and is completely irrational, by him <laughs> acting like he's on white men's side, they gravitate towards him. So then I, I actually tested that out with some other white dudes. And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they, they agree with it. So when you understand what makes people tick, then you can understand what leads to some of the disparities. And you can understand how to communicate them with a way to where you start turning around their thinking. But if we think we're going to communicate with them on our level, how we communicate with each other, then we're not going to break through those barriers. We're not going to break through those barriers at all. And this is why when you see a lot of them who have uh, racial equity uh, training and everything else, a lot of times they still keep on doing the same old thing. And as long as we uh, don't understand that, we need to learn how to uh, communicate in ways to where they get our issues and they're invested in our issues, then we're going to see, keep on seeing these same disparities where we're nine times more likely than white people uh, to get sentenced as adults when we're juveniles. And I know I read a study at, I think it was uh, Evergreen, Evergreen State College, where they said 77, or maybe it was Seattle University, is one of them because I had a bunch of studies. Black, black juveniles in Washington State get 77% more time than whites for the exact same thing. So this is another reason why not only should we know our rights, but we also should know what we're getting ourselves into, right? Because crime and going to prison and wasting your life, that's a waste by itself. But we're already starting from a disadvantaged point. We're already starting from a disadvantaged uh, game point. So we're getting involved in something to where we're already gonna get broke off more than anybody else in the first place. So what kind of logic is it? What kind of intelligence uh, are we really expressing? by doing stuff that we know we're going to get disproportionately treated worse than anybody else. We really need to uh, take, a new, take a new avenue, take a new approach, and actually do stuff to where they ain't got nothing on us, and we ain't throwing our lives away, but we're actually building our communities rather than destroying ourselves. Uh, so next one, brother. So unlawful searches and seizures. This is, a, this is a big one, right? Because how many people have been pulled over and the police say, uh, yeah, we got a uh, call of a suspicious vehicle matching this description, driving through this area. It's like, come on, man, I just got here, fool. You know what I mean? But this is this is a common thing they be saying to black folks, right? And then they always want to search your vehicle. You have a right to say you can't search my vehicle without a search warrant, right? So one, it'll protect you from corrupt cops because you know you already got some police got caught on body cam planting drugs, right? And two, it'll protect you if you are doing dirt, which hopefully you ain't from uh, just giving up, you know, the right to search and then they build a case on you and, you know, you, you, you're, you're done. But, you know, a lot of times they'll try to threaten you and everything else. But all you have to do is uh, know who you're communicating with and say, look, you can't, you can't search my vehicle. No, you can't. And if they try to threaten you, try to do anything else, be like, look, man, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not being threatened. My hand's up, but uh, you can't search this vehicle. I have a right to uh, not be an unlawful search or seizure, so you can't search it. And then if they do search it, then you can get anything thrown out of court. Next one. <clears throat> so right to a speedy trial. This is one of the ones that I was telling the brothers about, right? So Washington actually switched up the law to where you have to express the fact that, yes, I want a speedy trial. If they don't give you a trial, I actually saw a guy who uh, had life without parole. He wasn't ever getting out of prison. And being that they gave him his trial one day late, he got out. It doesn't matter what you're locked up for, what the charges are, or anything else. You have a right to have a trial within 60 days. If it's on federal charges, it's 90 days. But they switched it up, which most people don't know going in. If you don't say, I want my speedy trial, then it doesn't apply, right? And a lot of times you'll have a lawyer trying to bamboozle you and try to get you to waive your rights. But then you got to think about this. The more time they have to investigate you, the more of a case they're gonna build. The more time, even if you're innocent, the more time you're in the county jail and you're just dealing with the stress of being in the county jail, the more stressed out you're gonna be and the more likely you're gonna be like, look, man, I just wanna get this over with. Then you have people pleading guilty to the stuff that they're not even guilty of. So you have a right to a speedy trial and be sure you, if you ever get caught up, tell the, tell the judge, I want my rights. Next slide. Hey, Emily. So 
empathetic and perception bias. So how race influences convictions. Now, these are, uh, these are uh, wrongful convictions. For every white person who is wrongfully convicted of murder, there's uh, seven black people who are wrongfully convicted of murder. For every white person who is wrongfully convicted of a, of a sexual offense, there's three and a half times, uh, three and a half black people. So every two white people, you got seven black people getting locked up wrongfully for that. Drug crimes. For every white person who's locked up for a drug crime who didn't do it, there's 12 black people who get locked up and thrown in prison for drug crimes that they did not commit. So uh, one way to look at this is there are a bunch of racists. And I personally believe that's not the case. I believe a lot of them are, but I believe it's not the case with all of them, right? I believe it comes down to a, a empathetic bias. And what I mean by that is, is this. When you know somebody, you're more likely to give them the benefit of the doubt. When you relate to somebody, you're more likely to give them the benefit of the doubt. The reason that we get pissed off when we see a black man getting killed by the police is because we empathize with being a black man. You know, we, we, we relate to him being a black man. So we're like, hey man, look, you're dogging out a black man, right? So we relate to him. So when you have people relate to people, then they're more likely to have that connection. So when you have 97, 97%, 97 out of every 100 prosecutors in Washington State are white men, 97% of people in Washington State aren't white men, but 90% of prosecutors are white men. So how do you think those prosecutors are going to treat other white men? They're going to relate to them more. They're going to want to look out for them more, but they're not going to want to look out for us. You see what I'm saying? And it's natural to be against uh, crime. I mean, you know, nobody wants to be victimized, right? But they're going to relate to their own. And it's understanding that they're going to relate to their own that uh, we need to actually start getting educated more. You know, it's not that black folks ain't educated, but targeted edu education. We need more black folks going to law school. And we need more black folks trying to become prosecutors. You know, that, that, that goes against uh, some of the cultural norms when you say, like, uh, well, you gotta have black folks and throw black folks in prison? No, I'm not. What I'm saying is the more we get in these positions of power that they're in, that they abuse, the more that we can look out for our people like they look out for their people. But we need to start changing up the way that we're thinking and actually start uh, aiming to get in those positions of power. Otherwise, we're just gonna keep on complaining. 10, 20 years from now, we're gonna have some more riots and it's just gonna be the, keep on, the, the same old cycle. So until we actually start a movement that's systematic and actually uh, is serving our people, then we're, we're not really going to get anywhere. Next slide. So uh, you, guys you guys recognize Rainbow Thug, right? So plea bargains. And plea bargains, plea bargains are, are tricky because you got people like, like him told on all his partners. You got people like Sammy DeBull, Gravano, told on the mafia people. He killed 16 people in two years, right? So, but the, the thing is, you know, he's <laughs> guaranteed. And uh, you know to get some 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 sweet deal, but the thing is, why you know why screw over a bunch of people anyway when you when you was living the life? But plea bargains can also be tricky because when you take a plea, you might not be guilty of something. So you take a plea for something less, and it might seem like it's really not that big of a deal. But then when you go to get a job later on, they're discriminating against you for this plea bargain that you took that you really didn't do, but you're just trying to get up out of the system. So they overcharge you. And then they try to give you lesser charges. I'm sure the brother uh, Abdullahi uh, can probably relate to that, right? They, they try to threaten you, scare you. And, uh, you know, when I went back for resentencing, like exactly. I said, I did 26 years. Go ahead, bro. I got the set. I got exactly. You know what I got? I got, I got a petty, uh, I had a petty forgery. I had a forgery, right? A yeah. Years, and I can relate to that because they gave me a lesser charge. They gave me a plea bargain because I was paying for a lawyer 500 a month. And they gave me, they yeah. gave me a plea bargain. They gave me uh, a, a malicious mischief instead yeah. of the, uh, the the felony. Yeah. And I can't even get it right now. I, I got a job, but I can't get the like the good jobs, the airport jobs. Exactly. I'm still exactly. I'm still fight. I'm still uh, gonna clear up my system, so I can't even get no security jobs, the good privilege jobs. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like they just they gonna they're gonna say no. But this is one of the ways that they bamboozle you, right? And like I said, I went back for resentencing in 2016, and I saw this this young. Uh, African-American brother was 19. Yeah. They accused him of shooting a gun in the air, right? Yeah. Prosecutor told him, I'm not going uh, under 18 years on a plea bargain. He was facing 42 years for shooting a gun in the air twice. What? I read the police report. Police report, you had this woman across the street, uh, Karen. <laughs> she, uh, she said, 
I saw it. I'm a gun expert. I go hunting all the time. It was a silver automatic. I read the police report. They did a search warrant on his friend's house. They found a black revolver. They went back and, and interviewed the witness again. She said, I'm 100%. It was a black revolver, <laughs> right? So they told him, we're not going under 18 years on a plea bargain. Either you can take it. He didn't have no criminal record. He graduated high school. You, yeah. either you can take that or you can, uh, you can get the 40 years. I had no criminal record before this. I yeah, exactly. Nothing. Exactly. This is, this, this is how they do. But this is important yeah. that everybody hears this, right? Yeah. There's a, there's a white dude in the pod. Yeah. Meth addict. Uh -huh. Been locked up multiple times. 36 uh -huh. years old. He was in there for kicking in somebody's door, shooting at somebody. Somebody yeah. jumped on his back. He punched out the glass, the, the window, stabbed the person, snatched their necklace, got out. You uh -huh. know what his plea bargain was for? Yeah. Uh -huh. Five years. Just for that? Just for... No, five years for kicking in a door, shooting at somebody, punching out a window, stabbing somebody, and snatching somebody's necklace. His plea bargain was five years. The black kid who was 19, who had no criminal record, who shot twice in the air in yeah. the same pod, his plea bargain was 18 years. What? You see what I'm saying? That's so we're really, we're not only destroying ourselves by doing stupid stuff and end up going to prison, but we're, we're, we're setting ourselves up for failure because it's a, it's, a, it's a system that's built against us. So we need to be more intelligent on how we move and not more intelligent in a criminal way because there's a thousand and one ways to get caught. So yeah. not doing criminal activity and instead focusing on how do we build the empire of wealth and, and, and prosperity amongst ourselves to where yeah. we can uh, start accomplishing stuff, start accomplishing yeah. all that stuff that we're chasing in the criminal lifestyle. I did 26 years. There was a guy who I went to school with, who I was friends with, he started off the same year I got locked up, pushing grocery carts at Fred Myers. Five years before I got out, he became the president of Fred Myers, <laughs> right? You, you did 26 years? Yeah, 26 years. So oh, imagine all that time if I would have been out working, building wealth. All the little crumbs that I was chasing out in the streets, yeah. I would have had way more than any of that. But we don't think about it like that. Uh -huh. You see what I'm saying? We, yeah. we, do, we do reckless stuff and then put ourselves in a situation to where we're in a system that's built completely yeah. against us. Yeah. So we can do it a lot better by changing up our approach, changing up our get down. But we have to educate each other and be willing to, to do the work. But Marshall, brother, you, for you, Anthony Power, you, you did 20, that's really good that you came out like that. Like, I, I, I could even do three days in jail. I was in, I was in the jail for four days. First time yeah. ever. I was, I was literally crying. I, was, I wanted to get out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, how do you deal with that for 26 years? The mental, like, mentally, like. That's much, yeah. that's amazing. Like you, you got through with that. You're doing all this and You're doing all this good stuff. It's freaking. Yeah, that's, you have to. You have to thing. rise above. You have to rise yeah. above mentally or be destroyed. You know, one thing yeah. that I never did. I never. Yeah. I never accepted being a prisoner. Right. Yeah. Even when dealing with people who worked in the prison, dealing with staff, I was like, Nah, man. I'm not your subordinate. I'm. I'm your equal or superior. <laughs> you know, I, I yeah. value me. And I'm not going to be devalued because you look at me as less than human because I'm locked up or I'm incarcerated. Yeah. You know, I'll treat you like a human being. You're going to treat me like a human being. And I'm not going to waste my day sitting around playing pinochle or dominoes. I'm going to yeah. educate myself. I'm going to lead other. I'm going to lead other individuals, and I'm going to train other people how to be leaders. And then that's, that's how we ended up changing the prison system. That's my shot. That's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. All right. Next that's slide, amazing. bro. So this is just talking about how the long-lasting uh, consequences, like the brother Abdullah, he was talking about long-lasting consequences. You know, you exactly. take these people and you're thinking that they're going to uh, be a benefit to you. But a lot of times it's just, it's just a vicious cycle. Not only we're getting a job, but also there's a uh, housing. There's a, there's, there's the housing. There's, yeah. I mean, there's, there's a, a ton of stuff. It's all tied in together, right? I'm lucky I'm with my mom right now, man. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. And, I, and it's I, stuff that needs to change because even yeah. the laws that say, they're not supposed to do a background check except for like seven years back, right? Yeah, that, that's what but, I mean. But, but you know what they do? They do a background check seven years back and then they do it further back after that. So then they, they, they just find a different way to fire you after they find out <laughs> you was locked up for something, yeah. right? I mean, they that's just play crazy. games. So we need, to, we need to get get engaged in the system and get some of these things changed yeah. because there is long-term consequences. And this is also the, the, uh, the setup for failure is they'll give somebody an easy plea bargain where they do the time and then they're like, oh, that was easy. I can get right back to what I was doing, right? Not knowing that now you have a criminal record so they can use a criminal record against you and break you off with a whole bunch of time. So yeah. if somebody doesn't get it that first time and they think it's easy, then yeah. uh, they're just really setting you up for failure because 
uh, when you go back in the next time, now you got a criminal record, and they're going to use a criminal record to give you a lot more time. Yeah, they're going to they, they're going to use. They always tell me they're going to use your past history. Like if you did not, not something else, if I do something else right now, I'm going to be I'm going to be in jail. For like that's what yeah. they told me. Like I have one more chance. Exactly. I'm, I'm trying to really stay. They they're going to use that against you every time you you go to do something. They're going to use that criminal record charge against, criminal record against you every time. Exactly. So how to escape servitude? And I call it servitude for a reason, right? It says, uh, we're the only ones who need to change the way we currently, uh, we are the only ones that need to cha change the way we currently do things. A lot of police forces need to change as well. The police ideally are supposed to be there to protect and serve. The benefit of us working uh, towards a crime-free society is that it will get more and more difficult for the police who abuse the power to, to do so, right? So when we build a reputation of who we are, when we don't let them define who we are, then the black man no no longer is a threat in the public image because they try to they try to market that as as we're the threat, right? So we need to be conscious of this. And you drive down the street and you see this, you see a young black man getting searched. You're just like, man, you know, he's he's getting you know he's getting he's getting harassed. It's not that big that big of an issue. There's a, a true story. My wife my wife was tripping off this, right? I was 14 years old. I I, I was 16 years old. And uh, there was a white kid and a Mexican who I, who I met, we ended up walking, this is a long story, it's the night before and then leads to the next day, right? But we were walking down the, down the freeway. Yeah. And this white dude was like, hey man, because the highway patrol stopped and said, hey, go stand by the light post to back up a rise, right? White dude was like, hey man, give me that knife. So I gave him his knife. He tucked it in his waistband. So when they came over and they searched us, they searched the Mexican dude like mid, mid range, right? Boom, 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 boom. White dude, they just pat him, pat him down the sides, right? And he's the one with the knife. Me, it was un, uh, take, uh, undo your pockets. You know, there was a napkin with a phone number on it. And he's like, oh, what is this? Thinking it was drugs. It was just to the extreme, but it was just, it was just so textbook. It was like, it was like a, 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 a study, you know what I'm saying? Because it was a white yeah. dude, Mexican dude, black dude. And yeah. each one of them got progressively searched <laughs> more aggressively in yeah. the same stop. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Yeah. So we need to we need to change the narrative and uh, and actually start painting paint our own narrative of who we are as a people, so that we're not chasing somebody else's definition of who we are. So the police exactly. need to change, but we also need to take responsibility and, and acknowledge the fact that we need to switch up the way we do things, yeah. so it's, it's, it's beneficial to us all the way around. So we don't get uh, we, so we don't get down a drain. So we don't go down. We don't like if we you know we don't go down the system like. Yeah, like, move smarter. That's what I learned. Moving smarter and not, you know, and no, and the, the, don't put yourself in a situation where you're gonna get bit yeah, exactly. by the police. Change exactly. your environment. Change your the people you hang out with. That's what yeah. I learned personally. Yeah. Don't put yourself in that situation in the first place. Don't even put yourself in that situation. Avoid that. I got die. Makasya ang usapan mo maglalakad ko as kaya dira ay mo. Avoid that. Stop all that. Just avoid all that. That's what I learned. Just, there's no way. Yeah. Avoid, there's no way you can. Get away with it, but just avoid it. Yeah. So you, you see this. You, you see this next slide, though. Understanding and becoming the system. I'm going to talk about something that I don't hear nobody else talking about. Right? <laughs> Understanding and becoming the system. We always complain about the system, but we act like we're helpless. Why is it that we always have to be subordinate and somebody else is running the system? Why don't we get in those positions and we run the systems ourselves? How it's supposed to be run for us? Right? So you look at it in Memphis. Right? This is a picture of black police officers in Memphis, Tennessee. Black officers were threatened to be demoted, demoted if they kept complaining about racism that existed within the ranks. And it's a reminder, you know, some of us, you know, because we, we see a black police a lot of times, we just automatically call them Uncle Tom, and, you know, uh, you know, uh, talk, talk down to them. But we don't know if they're really trying to uh, uh, change the system from within or, or, or what the case is, right? So uh, next slide. This is part of, part of being, being educated on the system, right? So in Memphis, in Memphis, you have 63.3%. The majority of the city is black folks. So understanding who hires who. So if you want to change the police force, the people who live in the city, city limits elect the mayor. The mayor of the city typically appoints the chief of police. The chief of police hires who's going to become a police. So why is it that you have a city where over half of the people who live there are black and the police who are black are being threatened to be demoted if they keep on complaining about the racism within the police department. Excuse me, sorry. Uh, what does demoted mean? Demoted, like you're dropped down in rank. 
if you're oh, if you're oh, okay if, so let's say like you're you're a sergeant in the police force or you're a yeah. lieutenant you got you got some rank you got some you got some authority yeah they're being told if you keep on complaining we're going to demote you down to like you know a lower level officer so you're going to okay. get less play and less authority so in a city where you got 63.3 percent black folks you can elect the mayor you can elect who you want the mayor chooses who's the chief of police the chief of police chooses who works for the police so the chief of police can fire the police and yeah. he can hire whatever police he wants yeah so having the majority of the city you can choose who the mayor is right and i can understand in washington state some people might be, might be like well uh what we supposed to do is only four percent black folks in washington state but i created a database last year and I saw that a lot of these districts, it was only 50 or a couple hundred, couple hundred votes, right? Mm -hmm. So we might only have 4%, but if we organize our votes, we can play kingmaker. Those 200 votes, if we just switch, and you know, black folks automatically 90% vote for Democratic. But if we say, hey, look, we're gonna vote for the Republicans, or we're gonna vote for whoever, just to show we have the power to switch it up we have the power to choose who's going to be the governor. We have the power to say who's going to be running the House and the Senate. But we have to understand these systems to know how much power we actually have. Because once they see how much power we actually have, we're no longer the little 4%. We're the, we're the difference makers. We're the game changers. Yeah. And when we're the game changers, that empowers us to have them work our agenda. Yeah. One second. No problem. So, uh... So it's more than voting. So if we're gonna change things for the better in this country and have equity become the norm, then we need to do more than just vote. <clears throat> we need to be the leaders, that's what I was talking about. Be the change, be in the position of power rather than sitting around complaining about those who are. So if we're gonna do this, we need to organize, we need to start setting up our youngsters to go to college, let them know about financial aid, let them know about the different things, or, or pooling our own money in the community to send young brothers and sisters off to college with an agenda. Go to law school, go to this, go to that, and have an actual agenda to where they're working towards, to where they're gonna say, look, this isn't, this isn't an overnight fix. This isn't something that we're gonna go out right now and next month, everything's gonna be changed. We need to have a systematic game plan to where we start working on things now and we start seeing results in three, six, nine, 12 months, but also we have a plan for the next five, 10, 20 years, you know, to where we know our kids aren't gonna go through the same thing that we went through. So we need to have an actual game plan to where we're building these things up. One of my favorite ideas. A man is found the religion of his friend. So let one look to whom he be friends. So uh, anybody who's familiar with this, you know, whoever you hang around with, whoever you spend a lot of time with, their conduct wears off on you and your conduct wears off on them. It's like physics, right? If you have a, a glass of ice water, the, the room temperature is going to affect the ice water. The ice water is going to affect the room temperature, even on a small degree. So even human behaviors affect each other. Human behaviors affect each other. So we, we need to really ask ourselves, are we going to be the influence? Or are we going to be the influenced? You know, because we've been the influenced too long. And a lot of times, uh, all this stuff does is, is tear us apart. So ask yourself, what is your definition of a true friend? And how do you know when it's time to cut ties with an individual? Because sometimes it might not be best to cut ties. Sometimes it may be best to lift a brother up, dust them off, and be like, hey, look, man, look, this is what we need to do. Actually be an influence. When you cut them off, then you just leave them, leave them off to go, right? But you have to know the difference of when it is that time that you really need to just cut somebody off and when it is that you, know, you need to lift somebody up, lift, lift your brother up. Uh, next slide. Keys to unity. Hey, Yana. So these are some of the keys to unity. When you when you talk about when we talk about actually building, right? And I'm not just talking about the African community, the Muslim community. I'm talking about African American, you know, uh, working. Uh, uh, I mean, even 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 uh, the Latino uh, community. We need to actually start building. You know, if you just had a bunch of uh, African brothers, or you just had a bunch of African American brothers, or you just had a bunch of Latinos, you know what they're gonna do. They're gonna find ways to break up the ranks of that group. The bigger we are, the more organized we are, the more of a vision we have, the harder it is to break us up. 
the harder it is to divide us. But we need to find ways that we have uh, uh, tools to build these keys to unity. First off, you have to find a, fam uh, a common cause. This is something I did uh, when I was in prison. And this is something that it was, it, it crossed racial balance and everything else because we had common objectives. We all wanted to do better in life. We all wanted to do something for our family. Uh, guys wanted to get out of prison. So we had to find that common cause. So we had to find a common cause. Uh, communicate with one another. Uh, learn a personal history, likes and dislikes. <clears throat> the more we find in common, the easier it is to get along. This is one of the things when I was the Imam at uh, Stafford Creek in, in prison, I used to tell the brothers, when you get with the brothers, uh, and it might seem counterintuitive to some of the brothers and sisters, right? But it actually made sense because it, it worked. I said, when you, when, you, when you talk to the brothers, don't just try to go in talking about Islam all the time. Ask the brother what it was like for him growing up. So when you get to know somebody on a personal level, then anything to do with Islam or any other uh, commonality you got, it'll come out naturally. But you have to really get to know the person as an individual. Get to know the person and what makes them tick. Get to know the individual and know what brought them to be who they are today. So when you communicate and you really get to know, know each other on, a, on, a, on an intimate level, then you can connect on a level that uh, is not superficial at all and you can actually accomplish a lot more because you care about each other and you're invested in each other. Next, don't blame be the solution. I hear a lot of people, they want to blame the kids. They say the kids are wild. They want to blame the parents. They say the parents don't know what they're doing. And it reminded me of the story of Hitler, right? Uh, when he killed the youth and the youth had righteous parents and uh, it was a hidden mercy to save them from the drama of that kid when he got old, right? So this, is, this goes to show that some, some uh, parents, they might be good parents, but their kids just a mess. And some kids, they might have the potential, but their parents don't know how to reach them. So rather than spending that energy of find, of trying to find who's to blame, we need to just come together and say, hey, look, who cares if it's the parents' fault, if it's the kids' fault? Who cares about the blame? We need to focus on the objectives. We need to focus on what it is that we need to accomplish as a people, because as long as we're focused on who's to blame, we're not focused on what it is that we need to do to make things better. Make sense? So taking steps towards unity. So there, there's always commonalities. So people come together in prison due to necessity uh, who are enemies on the streets. So just to let some of your, your youngsters who are watching this know, there's people who are bitter rivalries on the streets. There's a bunch of people who they used to shoot each other or shoot at each other anytime they saw each other on the streets. But due to the politics of prison and how you need to come together on certain levels, some people who are bitter enemies, they're like, hey, look, man, we're in here now, so we just got to do what we got to do. And they're looking out for each other in prison, but they want to kill each other on the streets. So it's really about uh, finding that objective, finding uh, what's, it, what's more important than the beef, right? Because it's something that we really need to do. We need to bridge these gaps. We need to, we need to uh, reach out and actually come up with uh, an alliance. Stop trying to shoot each other and hunt each other down, but actually come up with an alliance to where we can work towards a common objective where everybody wins. Everybody's lost. You know, I've had family members get killed. I've had uh, 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 losses. Everybody loses, but when we all come together, everybody's gonna gain. And this is something that we need to do, not just in the Seattle area, this is something we need to do across the country. So what is our necessity to come together before uh, we have to make the alliances? That's what I just covered. Next slide. So this is, this is what I was speaking on earlier, building the empire. So before we begin our discussion about building the empire, we need to have a clear definition of what the role of an empire is. So the purpose of empires was usually to provide economic development, security, and political stability through economies of scale. So how do we build economic development within our communities? How do we build wealth in our communities? How do we build stability in our communities? So our community is our empire. So the question is, how do we create these things? How do we get involved in, in politics? Next slide. Next slide. So all hands on deck. So <laughs> so uh, community outrage over gun violence is somewhat misdirected.
So we should be outraged, but we need to be outraged at the conditions that lead to gun violence in the first place. Gun violence is simply the side effect. And I think it's easy to focus on the kids. It's easy to focus on what the youth are doing wrong. But what is it that built those conditions to where the kids want to do that stuff in the first place? So it's, it's a responsibility of the adults as well. <laughs> what's, this, what's the scribble all about out there? So, <laughs> and I ask everybody again, you know, have patience. This is, this is uh, doing things virtually is a lot different, right? So, uh, so we need a, a, a collective to get around the common objective. Next slide. Thank you, bro. Invest in our community. So this is, this, is, this, this is what it looks like. Right now, what we do, generally, I mean, some brothers have restaurants, some brothers have little stores. But if we can get together and raise our money to buy a masjid, we can come together and raise money to buy a grocery store. And everybody buys from that grocery store. We're reinvesting the money in our own community. And that's building two wells for the community, right? So this is what other people do. And then anybody else who comes into our community to go to that grocery store, invest in our community. So when you build up wealth there, then you have things that other, uh, other necessities that we do on a regular basis. Everybody goes clothing shopping. So why not invest in a clothing store? Everybody goes, uh, needs gas for their vehicle. Uh, I know some brothers have gas stores, you know, and gas stations, but investing in our own industry, investing in our own car lots. Uh, we need to invest in our communities and not just keep on spending our money because you got Muslims. When you look at the Muslims, you look at how many Muslims there are in just the Seattle area, right? Millions and millions and millions of dollars every year is going to other communities because we spend money in other communities. So this is part of changing the approach. It's finding a way to where we can come and build these things, pool our money and build these things to where we have this money that's once wealth is generated is reinvested in other things in our communities to where we're building up industry in our own community. We're not relying on anybody else and we're not making other people richer. But it's something that we need to think on a whole nother scale because we've been giving our money away, we've been giving millions of dollars away. We've been making other people rich while we stay poor. And we can, we can reinvest all these millions every year and all it does is make the wealth grow, make the community grow, and then it actually builds up the status of our area. Next slide. So real wealth. So if we're gonna build real wealth in our communities, then we need to understand how to use money to our advantage. When we know uh, where we're going, then we can plan on how to get there. So we need to build financial literacy. We need to take uh, brothers who've gone to business school and, and teach people how to start their own business. We need to teach uh, budgeting, savings, you know, everything, all, all the things that might seem basic once you, once you learn how to do it. We need to be teaching this stuff to our kids. And we need to teach this stuff to the adults who might not know this stuff yet. But once you know how money works, it's easier to make money work for you. When you, want, when you know how to make money work for you and we come together as a community, then it's easier to make the money work for the entire community, inshallah. Oh, next slide. So awareness of opportunities. Before this COVID-19, there was between 700,000 and 1 million tech jobs available in the United States. And they were available because they don't have enough people who know how to do it. So if we can get brothers and sisters to go to school, these are good paying jobs. And a lot of these jobs are in the Seattle area. So I'm talking about good paying jobs. And my, my, uh, my wife uh, works for a staffing agency. She's talking about due to the lack of interest in trade jobs, plumbers, electricians, and all that. Uh, these jobs are projected in the coming years to be six figure jobs. People making $100,000 for being a plumber because people aren't learning this stuff. So imagine if we get ahead of the curve and we start getting our, our kids and our youth and even the adults into tech. We start getting other people who like to do hands-on work into being electricians, into being plumbers. 
we're going to not only be investing our money in the community by spending in the community, but we're going to be making a lot of money to where we could be homeowners. We could be car owners. We're not paying those notes. We're not paying somebody else's rent. You know what I mean? We're becoming individually wealthy and we're investing that wealth back into the community, which makes the black and brown community that much better off. And when we're that much better off and we're, we're living to another status, then we can start holding them accountable. We can start holding them accountable a lot more. How much different is it when you see a black doctor who gets wrongfully arrested in his front yard? How much different is the public outrage? I'm talking about from the white folks. How much different is the public outrage when you see that happen to him than when you see a young poor black person get uh, falsely arrested? They relate to him more. It goes back to that empathetic bias, right? So if we get ahead of the curve and start uh, training ourselves for these jobs, that there's these major vacancies for, we're putting ourselves in a better position. We're putting ourselves in a position to make true money. And then remember to reinvest that money into the community. And then that's how we build our people up. But this is something that we ain't been talking about. Hassan was talking in the beginning, talking about how we need a movement. We need a movement. And we need to know if you're going to move, you got to know what direction to go in. And this is the, rec this is the direction that's going to actually give us uh, economic stability. Next slide. <coughs> So when we talk about peace treaties, right? Some coming together brings more power and results. And this is something that, that I'm saying about the city of Seattle. You'll hear, you'll hear a lot of times they'll talk about they need to, you know, we need to re reduce gun violence, right? But that is their objective. Reducing gun violence is a an objective, it is a objective for us, right? But it's not the objective, right? There's a lot more that needs to be done in the black and brown communities than just reducing gun violence. So that might be their objective, but there has to be a give and take. There has to be uh, an investment on their part to where, you know, because when they say reduce gun violence, they're not talking about, we need to have less black folks getting shot. They're scared that they're gonna get shot, <laughs> right? This year is somebody gonna get, get into a shootout, they're gonna get hit by a straight bullet. So, so we need them to be invested in us and you know we'll do the work that we need to do but they need to and and again i'm not i don't have a uh a, 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 a non-profit or anything else so i don't have skin in the game in that sense i'm for the people and uh, I'm, I'm i'm for uh equity so this the city wants this the city needs to fund certain things and they need to have uh as the, as they have their benchmarks they need to have benchmarks that benefit us as well and then have it be a true uh, back and forth effort to bring about the results, not only that they want, but that we want to see for our people as well. And, and, and a peace treaty, a peace treaty, you know, bringing the young, youngsters together is something that uh, benefits everybody, including their objectives. So how to go about it? So it's gonna take massive effort, right? Uh, it's something that we've seen before though. Communication, we need, we need the, the use, uh, so we need, the, we need the youngsters' help, right? Uh, and making sure that we reach every, every group or gang that exists regardless of size. These groups uh, may be made up of people who are, who we are trying to reach, for example. Our aim isn't to reach, oh yeah, so, so I wrote this stuff a couple weeks ago. So, so we're trying to reach the people who we're trying to reach. We're not just trying to reach gangs just because they're gangs. I'm not trying to reach some neo-Nazis <laughs> just because they're a gang, right? We're trying to reach the people who, who actually who, who it's applicable to. We're trying to reach our people, you know, and then let them, let them worry about reaching their people. But we're trying to reach our people who this applies to. And uh, if it gets bigger after that, it gets bigger after that. But we really need to uh, focus on not just saying, put down your guns, but actually uh, bring, bring people together and say, this is what we're, we're asking you to put down your guns for. If you're saying put down your guns, we're saying, uh, we want you to invest in yourself and this is how we're gonna do our part to help you invest in yourself. So we're gonna need the youngsters' efforts because the, the, the older brothers, it ain't enough. We need to train the young brothers on how, uh, how, how to lead, guide them along the way, because a lot of them already have natural leadership abilities, natural leadership qualities. So we need to uh, have everybody invested in this and we're gonna really need the youngsters' help to bring this about. Because imagine how much more power you got 
if everybody was coming together, you ain't got to worry about uh, a lot of a lot of the youngsters talk about. They say, uh, you know, they, they join a gang for because they're worried about you know the rivals. If we're all on the same page and we're actually working towards something, imagine how much more powerful you're gonna be. So. Developing new lifestyles. This is something that I've seen a lot with people who uh, convert different, different religions. If you're going to ask somebody to change up their entire lifestyle, you have to have something to fill in the void, right? People are afraid of not knowing who they are. People are afraid of not even having a, a culture to identify with. And this is one of the things that they've done a real good job on rebranding black folks to where uh, they have us watching things like Love and Hip Hop and thinking that's what we're about, so that's how we need to act. And really, we're just, we're just uh, uh, belittling ourselves when we do that, right? So if we're gonna ask people to, to uh, step into the unknown, if we're gonna ask people to change up what they're doing so we can bring about this new thing, then we need to have uh, clearly defined steps that uh, they know where they're going, they know what direction they're going in, and we're gonna need everybody's input when it comes to this, and we're gonna actually have a discussion uh, here shortly on that. So what are some of the things people can do to enjoy themselves or fill time doing something positive in the day, day-to-day -day purpose, uh, when they used to be out in the streets every day? All right, next slide. So regardless of what you think someone else will or won't do, or if you believe this is something that we can accomplish as a people, I want everybody watching this now, everybody who watches this in the future, just ask yourself this. Are you willing to get on board and try to make this work? Forget, uh, oh no, ain't, ain't, cats ain't gonna try to do this. The so-and-so's ain't gonna do this. Are you gonna do it? Are you willing to do it? And if you say yes, then let us worry about getting somebody else on board. But as long as you're willing to do it, that's all that matters. Because I'll tell you this, and this is from personal experience. When you start something like this, a lot of people don't get on board in the beginning. A lot of people are sitting back watching. And they want to see, are people getting on board? And then once they see other people getting on board and they see stuff start to work, then you start getting more and more people on board. And it just starts building and building. This is something that I've seen in our personal experience. I know this can work, and I know we can do this. So instead of talking about being a naysayer, talking about what ain't going to work, just answer the question if you're willing to do the work. Next slide. So the time of being typecast, and identify culturally by those who seek to exploit us is over. So we know that we need to, we know, we know, we know what we need to do as a community. We have traditionally been able to accomplish great things when we apply ourselves. So it's time for us to stop throwing our lives away and start applying the talents and skills that we've been blessed with. So uh, go ahead and put it on the last slide and we can go ahead and have a discussion. Assalamu alaikum. Jazakallah khair, brother Abdulwali, uh, and yeah. those who are here. Now it's a question and uh, answer session. Inshallah, the first question is from a brother who said he wanted to know your take on, uh, you know, the, your take on what's been happening around the country. You know, mm -hmm. people get angry, although we know these things aren't necessary, right? Meaning looting um, or helpful. So, what are what what is your take in terms of um, when it comes to I know you spoke about it a little bit earlier, uh, but can you uh, repeat to, for those who weren't here earlier on, your take on yeah. that? Yeah, so my, my take is I understand, I understand the pain, I understand the anger, I, I understand the outrage, right? Uh, what I'm saying is we need to be more methodical, knowing the situation, knowing, knowing the system, we need to be methodical in how we do stuff to where we're, we're taking uh, uh, definitive acts. So I'll give, I'll give you some more personal background, right? Not only did I do 26 years, but they put the juveniles, because I got locked up when I was 16. They put juveniles under the parole board. I got denied twice, despite all the stuff I did in the prison system, right? I got denied twice. The first time I got denied, I had people from different gangs, different races coming to me saying, uh, excuse my language, but uh, they're saying, man, fuck these fools, man. We need, to, we, need to just, we need to snap on these fools, right? Because they were pissed off about me getting denied, and they wanted to smash out the police, right? And I was like, look, man, I get it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm pissed off. 
But what is that going to accomplish? Right? All they're going to do is try to flip that and be like, hey, look, see, we told you. You know? So even though I was pissed off, uh, I knew that was counterproductive, counterintuitive. Second time, you know what I'm saying? I was like, Shh. you know? But, but then everything turned around. The second time they denied me, it actually pissed off a lot of people in the community. And uh, it changed the tide. He has important decisions and everything else. And I have to allow him out. So I get people's rage, but I'm speaking off personal experience. Once I learned the system and I learned how to go about doing things in the system, I realized when we do react rather than just act, right? Then they use our reactions to paint us in the way that they want to paint us in. You'll have white folks and black folks looting, but you see all the black folks on the news, right? And then you don't see the white officer with his knee on the black guy's neck, right? Yeah. So we're really hurting ourselves in the long run when it comes to these things. And we look at it from a historical lens. Like I said, when they uh, rioted after Martin Luther King got killed, 100 cities burned down. Long term, all it did was hurt the black community. You got the pain out, but it, long term, it only hurt the black community. In 1992, with the riots after Martin, uh, uh, Rodney King, uh, uh, police got found not, not guilty. The, the riots, they, they, they classify as the LA riots, but it's actually stuff going on in Detroit, Seattle, Portland, you know, but uh, they, they classify as the LA riots. All they did long term was hurt the black community. Granted, some people got some big screen TVs and everything else, but it, long term, it only hurt the black, black community. So, what I'm about, being that I've learned the things that I've learned and I've seen how black folks can accomplish things, I feel the pain. I'm pissed off. I hate uh, 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 injustice. I hate seeing somebody get murdered in the streets, you know, but I know that we need to be very strategic in how we go about things if we're going to accomplish the bigger goals that we're setting out to do. Uh, appreciate it. Thank you. Um, Abdullah, okay. before you ask a question, let me do in Somali. Uh, well, it's going to let you have to go family other that he met one of the guys in here. Haddad Suala, he said, Insha'Allah, and also, uh, we didn't get on well, can also share a you know, let you go, share any share. I'll get up and who salam, I salam, I like one of the library cat to uh, run team, um, we and I rent on my duke, I mean, my regular sorta in an Kahadono, I know about the zero or one accent, uh, over Halena, but can shall we see Allah about Insha'Allah, Ganta tag, and then we'll call on Abdullahi. Quick question, this is just a quick question and answer session, so we can move on, Insha'Allah. Go ahead. Uh, okay, I wanted to uh, uh, answer. I wanted to ask a question to Brother Anthony Powers. Uh, man, how did you? Uh, if you mind me ask, what did you do to get locked up when you were sixteen? If you don't mind me asking. Murder. Okay. Yeah. Hey, man, that's that's good that you 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 came out strong and like you're doing this, you know, preaching. That's really good. Like I I, I really yeah, meet yeah. you in person. And, you know what I mean? Yeah, and I, and I turn my life around. You know, this is one of the things, you know, they, 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 they want people to take responsibility for their crimes. I take responsibility for my crimes and I regret the things that I did, right? Yeah. But I would really like to see them practice what they preach with taking responsibility for the things they do wrong, right? Yeah. Like you hear a lot of people, they talk about uh, Bill Clinton locked up. Yeah. So you hear, <laughs> politically right now, you hear the presidential elections, you hear a lot of people talk about Bill Clinton locked up a bunch of black folks, right? You've, yeah. you've heard that on the news? Yeah. But... Presidents don't pass laws. Senators and legislators, representatives pass laws. And it was Joe Biden who led the crime bill that affected, uh, got 600,000 black folks locked up and affected millions of black folks in the streets. So, you know, but even now, when he's asked about that, he says, no, I don't regret it. Yeah. And look, man, if you, if you just admit, you know what I'm saying, that you was wrong, you know what I'm saying, don't expect one thing out, out of the people and then you're not even willing to admit when you're wrong. You know what yeah. I mean? So, I mean, yeah. uh, I regret the things that I did. Uh, yeah. It was before I was Muslim, and, uh, you know, I was lost in the sauce. It's not oh, something no. I'm, just, I'm, I'm Right now, I'm, I'm dealing with, you know, I, I can, I, I want to meet you in person. I wish this, the coronavirus isn't here. We can meet in person. Hopefully, yeah, yeah. inshallah, we can meet in person, you know? Yeah. Inshallah. Brother Abdullahi, Rudwan, Muhammad, you had your hand raised. Go ahead and unmute yourself, please. Okay, so I had a question. Um, do, would you advise any young people to, you know, become police officers in Washington? Yeah. Um, okay. But I hear that there's a lot of, you know, police just exiting, you know, not becoming police. And uh, 
I don't really know if there's a, there might be a lot of racism in there. I don't know. Uh, like, do you still think that people should still become that? Yeah, because I, I believe the best way to do it is to change it from the inside. I actually had one of my partners who I was uh, best friends with growing up, and he got uh, another one of my partner's dad was police, right? So they're super racist. So they, he, he's the one who got him in. But when he got in, then that opened it up to a bunch of other black folks, and now they got a whole bunch of black folks on the police, on the police force and the sheriffs, right? So that's the best way to change people's perception. If they're taught what a black person is, and they don't know black folks, then they're going to keep on going off of what the perception of us is. But when we get in those positions, one, we know that we're not going to dog each other out. Inshallah, God willing. Uh, we're not going to dog each other out like they dog us out. But also, it gives us an opportunity for them to see who we are firsthand when you got one of your, one of your colleagues. And it might not be easy, but we need to really start getting in these positions, not just complaining about the people who are. And as far as the people who are exiting the position, it's because for years, police have been held as, you know, these, uh, these people to look up to. But now you have social media exposing people who abuse that power, and it's no longer that status symbol that it used to be. You know, I mean, we know police are needed. You know, if somebody broke into my mama's house, I'm like, yo, call the police. You know what I'm saying? I want to, you know, go, go help. You know what I mean? But uh, so you need it for, uh, for a stable society. Bottom line, you need some form of enforcement. But we need them to serve the people and not think that we're uh, subservient to them. Thank you, thank you. Uh, good, uh, good question, brother Rudwan. Uh, any other? Khof of Somali don't know. Swell ko idia muchira. Welcome, Khof Kasena. Hadia swell kaptit. Go ahead. Abdul Hukun Mia. I see. Wa salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. أدوم هاد سنتين أنت مقري سيو شيخ أيو أنت بواد السلام يا وعن شاء الله إن سو هشيد وحوي كلي سدبينو عينو لسنا وضطو قعما يسوق بصدا وأقف ضد وحي أن قبان كرئين لقبطو سيادة لنيردا سيداي مكوكلي dad ku adeewa inagu siyaata lahaan waan kala filaqsanahay ee ni waliba tiisa new community ay wada taqanto tanaqdo in waxyaabaan ka dhacaya deeyn ka adduunka ka dhacaya ama gobolka ee gobolada ka dhacaya kale si ay uga hortagno ee bal wuxuu inuu xata isugun wax ay isugun imaadno oo in ee waalidiinta iyo dalin yarada iyo hadal ku gacma deeyna gacmo de jirbo wax ku gooyaan habkeeba ugu fudud ee wadiiqiya aan raaci kara insha Allah waa ka baxay okay dad badu maatan tahay abdu hukun the brother asked uh, multiple question within that question um, so uh, he asked number one, he said thank you for um, you know for providing this uh, helpful info and you know, sends his greetings to everyone in the platform. Um, the brother said, uh, Abdul Hukun said, how could we, um, seeing with all the disunity amongst our people all over uh, across, and um, what is the best way or the most efficient way to have, to create unity, and how can we build uh, uh, something, especially when it comes to our youth? So I'm just kind of giving you a summary of what he uh, couldn't um, translate for word for word. But how can we go about uh, building the unity and especially making sure that we build something mm -hmm. that is mm -hmm. mm -hmm. community? And mm -hmm. how, especially he said in Seattle, there's a lot of disunity as well. And uh, we don't have a community that is united. Yeah. So uh, there's, there's certain objectives that, you know, everybody wants to work towards, right? So we need to come together and actually start building some of these things up. And it doesn't matter if it's even a small, a small amount of people in the beginning. When other people see uh, what's going on, people are going to gravitate towards it. And another thing is we need to address some of the things that are causing disunity. <clears throat> you know, like when everybody's, and not everybody, but when you have certain uh, uh, cliquish behaviors to where people want to just uh, 
look out for themselves and not 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 look out for uh, other people. Just speaking as a Muslim, I like to see the Muslims uh, get to, to get to get to, uh, together more and be willing to openly address some of the issues that are that are facing our community, not just with gun violence, but with uh, Islamic issues. You know, I mean, there's no reason why we shouldn't be able to come together as Muslims and, and discuss things as Muslims. So I say just, you know, building this game plan, everybody who I've spoken about as far as what we, we, what we discussed tonight, as far as reinvesting in our own communities and everything else, coming up with a system to where we can start doing that. And then we're going to get enough people on board Everybody is not going to get on board in the beginning, but we're going to get enough people on board to where when other people see the results of that, they're going to want to be a part of that. Thank you. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, anyone else before we move on? Um, for those of the youth, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's, I know it's uh, COVID-19 is kind of tough on folks. Please write your name on the group chat. Uh, Bridging Culture Gap will definitely give uh, all the youth uh, stipends. You'll get a gift card, a cash gift card. So please write down your first and last name in the, um, in the group chat, and I'll take a screenshot of that, and we will send you a $25 to $30 gift card. Uh, anyone else with a question? Right. Uh, you know, I had a question. From the youth. Go ahead, Abdullah. Uh, yeah, you said, uh, you said a $25 gift card if you write your name. Write your name in the chat room where it says to everyone, and I'll take a screenshot and I'll give okay. uh, start sending gift cards to people. Is, is uh, like mine right now? Is that right? Abdullahi, the one I did right now? Yep, just write Abdullahi and then we'll go from there. Um, well, it's Kamesh Kuchira, well, it's Kalamachira, or Chal in Marakti, um, Suel, well, can we deal with Octihin, uh, Wahialaha, Kasada, Magaluinka? وأدي أيضا نروح لنا هاي ولا ليشين لجود ليا وضن كان حق درضة أنا جنا آخر كشيء كذا من نص وساعة ما هو حكيلية أو أو كوسا بسن تد كان أصل كذا نقول معنى وضن كأفريكان أمريكان أنا جوا عربا دلني عربيا وامريكان وامريكان وين سومالي أمريكان رنتي سدا أجادة مركمشوا حلوب بهين يا هاي سيرة عقل جلا عقل علينا إن عربيا لا الله يود كلا لا الله دقال ي ي ي ي ي أفلاجادين وحلقو ما كانوا، so مركا إن شاء الله والد كقف كي ربعين السؤال. أنا أدر مريض نلعب على صار هذا نام هذا. yeah. مركا that's all good. um so إن شاء الله. أنا حمد وح. أنا سألم عليكم. أنا جو حرام. go ahead to say. مالي مخلا. oh to مخلا نا. yes English please. so مالي بس. ها in محو أها سامالي وقالي. okay فاهم. إن محو أها إن المهنة سامالية إن أو يعني وحيالها جانجس كي وحيالها ماركتي جلا إن قرت المها ماركتي لبكو أقبل لما ذا إسكولكا إن الما بدن واحد كده أمين ilmo waxa jir iska dhaadhacsi oo Soomaali ah yaani iskuulka in in la yar takli ay ku dadaasho in macal ilmaha madowga wadanka ku dhashayo kale yaani waa wax stereotype ahaan laga dhaadhacsiyay amaba iyaga dhaxdooda ay iska dhaadhacsiyeen in ilmo badan aad jiro Soomaali ah oo iskoolka iska taga oo macalinka aan maqlin in maalinta oo dhan wala in إن سيد قف بهير قبو حناقيا مل مل بالجيني حفيز كأوكله إن ساعدوا وقت جماش وكل منيا إن يعني إسكول كسكت جا أوكلية أو كل تذالين إن وارد كنا يعني ور أم هيان أوكله وارد كحكو أرنيا ده هاي إسكول أكو ما خنا مان تدن أو أنا جو قفي عنا هيو جريت كي جوا إيه أوكله وحيالها سو وارد ككذا دعسي يعني المها قار مركا إن أنا جم دور مربان أركي هذا كور هوي عمل ونشر ويل كاد ما دشان إيرها ذاك قار ما تجعله إني لوش وح وح يعني يعني سومالي ده أنا ضد أفريقيان أنا هاي أناك ما دام ضد سومالي أفريقيان أنا هاي قفل بحو إسكدا دعسية إنه قفل كالك قطر سين هاي إنه عنو قرب عنو كالك سير قطر سين هاي تي أنا قد ضد كبيرو آني وأنا هاي بينو آني نوع البنو ويسكوت شيران 
قار في عنا ولينا هاي إن قار أبا ما عرفت إنه إن حنا ولينا هاي نوع كستوانا لك هلا واحد ضد يعني أبرفك تموه ذنهن إن مركا إن مركا هو يوم بدن أيات شراء يعني مشغول سكيرة أه أما با أو المها ما عرفت إنه إن حوق بدن أن ساري إنه كور هين ب أو مر مر أنا وحن إسلها إن إن عنق إنتي دتشيان يعني وح ما يكبق عنه كله إن 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 هو هذات كسكول كل عاجي كقاتان قفل بو حفيز كسيروس كفل يا من معلمين تا العاج بيكو قاتان المهاني تو إني وحبران إن مرك وارد ك يعني حقه أوليها إنه إنه أتجا إنه أجاد عنقيسة ده بقل ديران أبدا إلا سمي لقط لقط لا صار عمل جور هاي زائد إن مرك هذات كبدنا إن إن ما دام أنا جد سومالي أنا هيو ما له هذات كقارو حس كده دعسي أنا مع علينا كم بمسؤول كه وحق برايو مرك دبجل بدن عنق كم سميان الماء كم سميان دبجل بدن ودراب إنه هو موجع لي مع علينا كم معلمين تقار أي في عينهن صلر فون كعنت وكل قرايا إيميل كيس صلر فون كيس تكس مسا أدري كرتا إيميل أدري كرتا إن حلقو حاكو قاري كرتا لانشيق سكجل كسكول كقفك وسواق هذا كراهوي هذا سكجل سكول وبحوله سكجل عنو وبحوله كلاس وقاتو إن إن كلاس كساعة دو قاتا كلاس سهبل ساعة دو قاتا حلقة قدر دو ساعة ده سكجل كنتو ميل كل دكتور عمل إن أيو أيو وحك السوقان كرا مركا إن علا دو حي أنا قاعد بلاوتين يعني رأي جاي وياي هاي إن المهن سكول كزائد مكود دالان وارد كدب قلب بدن مصي سميان عنوك مركي هذا ولا ده هاي سكول كم هو كقال الجبين يسيت صارت أوحى اللي قاعد ربي ولي قاعد عشر مائة تسوي علني إنه كلاس كوس كيف دين ترتي حاجة نيدا كجبة صار مركي نيدا كجبة كبعد أيه معركة المها كلو حنون كرعة صار أنا قلت أيه أيه هاي المها مع كوارد كل كل يتجليو إني زائد أجور حيانه كان سكول كود وأنا كبحة سلام عليكم Hello? Can't hear you, brother. Your brother, I can't hear you. Can you hear me? Your brother, can you hear me? Uh, you guys hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah, okay. So we're going to move on to... Uh, Brother Rudwan, uh, did you have a quick question? Yes, I did. Um, so basically, you know how you said like, we should be in every field, like prosecutors and police officers or whatever. But, but what if like every part of it, like from the president to the politician, to the judges, to every part like of the government, all of them are majority them. Like, how are you going to fight against all of that? Like, that's too much, you know? Yeah, the thing is... Like, the only to... way... Uh, I can only see a vigilante, you know? Uh, I can't really... <laughs> even a war, like, you know? I don't know. Yeah, There's many, really no way. How many times has a small force defeated a great one, right? A big one. So, uh, the thing is, we don't need to take over the whole country. We, we need to take over the pockets that we live in. So just like just like the Koreans in Koreatown in Los Angeles, after the, the the LA riots, they came together and they're like, yo, look, we need to we need to invest in our community and we need to reach out to the African American community to communicate with them to see how we can serve them better so that the beef doesn't happen later on in the future. So now, even though out of the uh, out of the people who live in Koreatown in Los Angeles, the majority of them aren't even Korean, but they invested in the industry, which is exactly what I'm talking about us doing for ourselves. They invested in the industry to where they built a respect for them to where people can infringe on their rights. And they built a safe zone for their people to where they can thrive and they can, uh, they can live a, a peaceful life. They didn't take over all of America. They took over enough for their, for their people. And that's all that we need to do. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, the sisters? Uh, I have a question. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, my name is Mohammed. 
Mohammed, and uh, I was just wondering since like back in the day how we had movements like the Freedom Summer, is there ever gonna be a chance where we can like make something that's like the Freedom Summer where we can have like, cause I see like uh, around protesters, we still have white people that are allies with uh, the, the black community. Uh, I was just wondering if we can bring them together to have a movement just like the Freedom Summer where it's like a nonviolent effort. Oh, most definitely. Most definitely. And that's, and that's one of the things I was saying at the beginning when I was saying we need to make sure not to push away the allies that we have, right? Because I've seen that before where like uh, white people be like, hey man, look, I, 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 I feel the pain and I'm ready to move. And, uh, and then you'll have people say, yo, you don't feel the pain. You need to you know, say, just, just know your lane and let us do what we do. It's like, yo, if they're trying to help, let them be a part of the part of the solution, you know. So, so I, I definitely would love to see uh, exactly what you're talking about, and uh, we we definitely need to uh, create a new movement. And that's that's what I'm propagating today is uh, get out of the streets because the streets are are set up against us. So get mm -hmm. out of the streets, communicate, unite, and let's start uh, building some st uh, strategic things to where we create a movement that benefits our people. Inshallah. Thank you. Yeah. Anyone else before we move on? And before we close out, uh, it looks like, uh, Brother Anthony, our time is up almost. Uh, okay. We'll close in a moment, inshallah, and we'll move on. Man, you know, it was, it was, it was a great meeting with everybody. Uh, I ask everybody to, to share this, share this, uh, go on to Facebook, share it, share it, share it, share it. Watch it again. Uh, pick up on the things that you might not have picked up on the first time and communicate with other people. Communicate the vision. See what they think about it, and uh, let's 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 come together and do it. Don't get discouraged when people say that we're not going to be able to accomplish it. I've heard that before. When I set out to change the prison system, people say uh, we we're not changing nothing. This is how it's always been. But we set out to do it, and we did it. Uh, and I have one we question. Do the streets. Uh, I you know, uh, can you open my uh, video so I can screenshot? I want to I want to post it on Facebook. What's that? Uh, I wanted to post it on Facebook my video. Yeah, one second. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah I wanted I wanted I wanted to post it. Take a screenshot. Yeah. This is very beautiful, you know. This is I hope to do this again. Uh in in person, you know. Uh yeah. this is very great to, to hear from you, Anthony. Uh mm -hmm. Anthony Bar uh, Bowers and Ayala. It's very great to hear from you guys. Uh you know, we talked about very good stuff like stuff is happening right now in America. So it's a very, you know, yeah. very good, very good discussion. Thank you, brother. And there's, there's a lot of people doing great work, but I definitely uh, give a shout out to Bridging Cultural Gaps because you guys are at the forefront in the Seattle area. So I thank you, Brother Yelman, and everybody who's working on the team. I appreciate it. Thank you. I was going to ask you, I was going to ask وأضرك تاب مقالوين كو حكا السعوداء ريريهين أيدون كنا إلهي هنا قيل علي الشركة كموصنا كيكا قال كا عروريهين أنا دي بل إن شاء الله هلا إلى عشر السلام عليكم Thank you everyone for coming Appreciate you Thanks for sharing your time with us Have a lovely evening Thank you brother Thank you